Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Zenobia Harris, and I am the CEO for the Kent Chamber of Commerce. On behalf of myself, my staff, and our board of directors, we'd like to welcome you to our uh, March luncheon. Uh, today, we are honored to have Mayor Ralph coming in and speaking with us today. Before we get started, just want to go over a few housekeeping items. So this uh, webinar is copyrighted and presented by the Kent Chamber of Commerce and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form with Without the express consent of the chamber. Again, this meeting is being recorded and hosted live on Facebook by our media sponsor, South King Media, aka I Love Kent. For all things Kent and community uh, updates, you can follow I Love Kent on Facebook. And if you are a member, there is also a great free advertising package that they have put together. Uh, so expect an email for that if you don't already have it. Um, so again, part of the chamber is us bringing uh, different speakers in, and that is uh, thanks to our investor members. And so right now, I'd just like to thank our investors. Um, as you can see on the screen, we have, of course, our media sponsor, I Love Kent. And then here you see our sponsorship packet, and we have a variety of businesses who have uh, continued to support the chamber um, and the programming that we have to make this a, a great organization. And so with that being said, we appreciate our members, we appreciate our investors in our community as well. So um, this year, um, you all have received the sponsorship packet and um, the sponsorship packet will tell you all the different ways that you can put your business in front of uh, this community of folks. And uh, this year, Abacena Hair and Beauty Clinic of Kent, uh, they also have a location in Renton, but they're new here, downtown Kent. Uh, they are our membership uh, luncheon sponsor every single month. So each month they're going to give us something fun and something fresh and something new to think about. Um, and so now um, Abacena, they have a array of different uh, face treatments, various body treatments, a broad selection of hair products. Uh, Abacena is a black owned, women and minority owned, located here in downtown Kent on First Avenue. And so today uh, we have, I'm not sure, we have someone from Abacena today doing uh, a, a quick Five minute commercial. Welcome uh, fellow Kent ch chamber members and welcome Mayor Ralph. Uh, glad to introduce myself, I'm Charlie Schmidt. I'm a consultant and a operations manager with um, the brand new Abyssinia and Kent Salon where you're beautifully and wonderfully made to uh, get that standout hair care and beauty experience. <clears throat> Thanks for the nice introduction and description of our owner, Minnie. She uh, is very committed to chamber activities and, and chamber support. <clears throat> we want to remind all our chamber members that being a chamber member to Kent, you get a 25% discount off of any of the salon services. We do cuts, coloring, and styling, and also um, skin care. So um, we're also hiring. If you know anybody that's an experienced stylist would like to have fun offering the Abyssinia hair and beauty experience, we do offer a finder's fee. So for more information, we do have a web page on the Kent Chamber web page. And later on, I'll, I'll put it in the chat and um, abyssiniaclinic.com slash Kent and on Facebook. We're glad to support this event today and um, support the community connecting with each other through the chamber. So thanks for the chance to support the event and get some advertising in. No problem at all, Charlie. Thank you so much. And some of you, I know we have some new members on the line. Charlie might be your ambassador. And since Abyssinia has come into the city of Kent, they've really been an advocate for the chamber, but really just a great community partner. So if you um, have time, they have a ribbon coming up, is a ribbon cutting coming up as well. So a lot of information for new businesses here in Kent. So thank you so much, Charlie. Um, before I go any further, I don't know if I even said welcome to Women's History Month. I am so excited. Uh, the last two months have been great for me. So Black History Month, obviously being a Black woman in the community, a leader in the community, is a really great month for me to get out and kind of talk about some of the things that I do um, outside of being in the chamber and celebrate women. And now, or celebrate everyone, celebrate Black history. And now, Women's History Month, I get to celebrate some of the great women that I come in contact with every 
single day. And so we have some wonderful women leaders uh, that are part of the chamber. Hence today, our mayor, she is a woman, she is fierce. And so she's going to give us some great information today. So um, I didn't want to go any further without saying welcome to Women's History Month. Um, and then also for some of you who received the lunch today, I ate before this uh, event started. So I want to say a big thank you to Cafe Pacific, uh, who is a chamber member, has been a longstanding chamber member and provided us with a great lunch today. So I appreciate everyone for supporting the chamber. So that way we can also support our small business. Um, we can support Cafe Pacific. So I hope you enjoy your lunch and uh, be on the lookout for the menu for, uh, for next week. So now um, it's time for us to do some networking. Just so you know, the chamber, we are really working on how we're going to be able to get back together sooner than later um, and do some small in-person networking events. So for now, uh, what I'd like to do is just do some virtual networking, do a quick roundtable introduction. Uh, your name is on the screen, so you don't have to worry about that. Your contact information is there. This really is your time to who is a perfect client for you, any specials you're running, anything that we need to know about your organization. Um, so just use your time wisely because, again, all your information is on the screen. And first up, we have D'Angelo and D'Angelo Carter and Darius Williams with Northwest Industrial Staffing. Hello, my name is D'Angelo. I am the sales manager with Northwest Industrial Staffing. Uh, we are located in the center of Kent, right across from the Kent Transit Station. Uh, we are always looking for people, um, and I'm always looking for new clients. Um, our niche is light industrial packing or light industrial staffing. So that's anything from a picker to a packer to a forklift driver to a machine operator. Uh, that's our niche. That's what we're good at. And that's what I'm always looking for. So if any clients out there that are looking for um, staff, immediate staff, please contact Northwest Industrial Staffing. Feel free to contact me, myself, uh, D'Angelo Carter, or my recruiter, Darius Williams. Next up, we have Jeff. Jeff Wagner. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Jeff Wagner. I am the Municipal Manager for Republic Services. We handle all of the City of Kent's um, franchised for garbage, recycling, organics. Um, we are your environmental partner. For commercial, I guess our ideal client is anybody that's looking to help reduce their waste and looking to increase their recycling. So feel free to reach out to us to uh, lower your garbage bill and to increase your recycling. Jeff Wagner with Republic Services. Awesome. So Heritage Bank is a bank located here. They have really great values as an organization. They are definitely a community partner, a partner with the chamber, a partner with a variety of different organizations. They really believe in community first um, and banking. And so um, they also are doing PPP uh, loans as well. And so we appreciate their service to the community in that way. If you get back on, uh, let us know, Lori or Yvonne, all their information is there. So if you're looking for community banking, you can reach out to them. I'm Sarah from Multi Service Center. I am the development director. Uh, Multi Service Center is a nonprofit serving South King County. Uh, we help residents of South King County with housing, education, employment, energy assistance. Uh, we operate the Federal Way Food Bank and also the Washington State Long Term Care Ombuds Program. Um, our customers are the entire community. So uh, anyone who needs help or anyone who wants to help the community are our customers. So thanks. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah's also a board member and D'Angelo is also a board member with the chamber. Do you notice at the top of your screen, you have when you've been a member because we appreciate your support. You also have there, if they're a nonprofit, uh, that is listed there, if they're an investor. So we're really trying to give you an understanding of who is in uh, the room today. So pay attention to the uh, top of the slides. And next we have um, new to the Kent Chamber, Anne. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Anne. Um, I am the new staff partner that works with the Relay for Life there in Kent. Um, it's called the South King County Relay for Life. So we run pretty much from Tukwila all the way to Federal Way, but our event is traditionally held um, there at French Field. Um, we are looking for participants to come join. We're looking for any cancer survivors, any cancer patients that are looking for resources or support. Um, and we're also looking for partners in the community, looking for businesses that are looking for sponsorship opportunities or for partnership opportunities. We have a huge social media presence um, and we'd love to get customers to you um, as well as get awareness for our event out into the community. So if you have anything you might be interested in, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll put our event website in the chat. But yeah, 
I'm excited to join you guys. So Steve Half is with Oberto Snacks. Uh, Steve was a longtime uh, board member, but Oberto is an investor with the uh, Kent Chamber, and they have been a longstanding partner with the Chamber since 1986. Uh, they're located here in the city of Kent. And one thing that I'd like to kind of spotlight with Oberto is they are looking at ways that they can have their entire staff uh, vaccinated at their location. And so we are in contact with uh, King County and hoping to get that done for some of the larger companies. So if you are there or you're out there and you have a, a very large staff and you would like to have vaccinations come to you, reach out to the chamber. We can connect you with the right people to get your name on, um, you know, on a list of sorts um, that so they wait that way they know that you want that so Steve is a great community partner we appreciate Oberto and what they do for the community. Hi there I'm Julia Patterson with Vine Maple Place where we are breaking the generational cycle of homelessness by working with single parents and their children. I want to tell you very quickly a story about Nicole. Nicole came to Vine Maple Place um, with her two young children they had been sleeping for some period of time. I, I think it was uh, days, maybe even weeks, um, sleeping in their car. And she had had to make the decision every night how much she could afford to run the car to keep the children safe and warm. And these are the kinds of stories that we see all too often here at Vine Maple Place. Nicole herself had been um, the child of a mom who was drug addicted and had had a very chaotic childhood. And she is devastated that she's now raising her children in the same kind of environment. And so now they are safe, uh, they have housing and we are working with Nicole and her children to provide counseling <laughs> to help her get a job and to grow in her parenting skills. And I just have a brief quote here. She says, my children are thriving, not just surviving. Thank you for helping me see my potential as a mom. If you want to learn how you can help um, single parent families who are escaping homelessness, there are lots of opportunities to do that. One way is to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you can also reach out to me and I can share with you some virtual and in-person ways that you can help as well. Thank you. Hello, everybody. This is Gayla Gutierrez from the Kent Downtown Partnership. Sorry, I joined just a little bit late. Uh, the KDP is here in downtown uh, Old Town, um, just right down the way from the City Hall. And we are here working on revitalization efforts uh, for our downtown, as well as small business advocacy, working on bringing some community events to downtown this uh, 2020. We're working on those as we speak, so we're excited for this year. And uh, here to support all of our businesses and community and bring people together uh, downtown to uh, endear them to our awesome downtown. So I'm here if anybody has any questions or uh, wants to be more involved with some of the um, programs and initiatives that we have going on, please feel free to reach out. So Eileen and Callie's Place is a nonprofit here in the city of Kent, uh, and their mission really is to help young women who are aging out of foster care, and they do a really big birthday party every year. So hopefully they're able to have that huge birthday party for uh, the youth that are aging out of uh, foster care. And so if you want more information, you can visit their website. We'll have Araya put that into the chat box, but uh, they're doing a lot of work in the community and we appreciate their, their effort there. Hi everyone, how's it going today? <laughs> um, I am with Gellner Law Group and I am here to help people with wills and estate planning and probates if a family member passes and uh, also with tax controversy if someone is having an issue with the IRS. And um, I'm happy to be a member of the Kent Chamber and the Kent Downtown Partnership. And I look forward to meeting everybody when we can get back together and say hello. Uh, I've recently started with Amazon and I'm pleased. Uh, I feel like I don't need to introduce what they do. Um, so I'm going to skip that part. Uh, but I'm pleased to say that they are um, getting much more involved with the Chamber and with Kent in particular. So super happy that Amazon can be um, a bigger part of the chamber and the community as a whole. So thanks so much. So I'm coming to you from Polyform US and we sell to um, commercial and recreational boats and fenders for boats. Um, buoys, I'm sorry, buoys and fenders for boats. So we don't sell to individuals, but we are always hiring. So if anybody know anyone needs to be hired, let us know. 
Well, good morning. I'm Katrina Paradine. I am a resident of Kent, and I am also a real estate broker who ensures reliability, excellence, and joy. I'm with John L. Scott. Um, I provide five-star experience and knowledge to my clients. I'm tenacious and driven and do this with a smile. It is with all of this that your home buying or home selling will be seamless and in your very best interest. That's my new elevator speech. <laughs> I like it. I like yeah. it. I'm we should practice, teach a class practice. on how to do an elevator speech. So that's a whole nother story. So next <laughs> well, you got to make it short, 15 seconds. <laughs> yes. All right, Alon. My name is Alon Edmondson. I am the owner of um, Alon Edmondson State Farm Insurance Agency office here in Kent. We're right on the corner of uh, Tequila and Renton as well. So we service the Tri-City areas, um, offering auto, home, life, health, uh, renter's insurance. We also do commercial insurance as well. Um, we do surety bonds, fidelity bonds, and our mission is to uh, obviously uh, prepare you for uh, the worst, but uh, protect you in a way that helps your life go right. So um, that is my contact information. If you ever need me, feel free to reach out. And I love the chamber. Yay, thank you. And thank you so much, Sonovia, for all that you do. Yeah, I appreciate you, no problem. So Alon, along with D'Angelo, um, our folks that have just joined our new committee here at the chamber. So of course, you know, we've had our longstanding committees. We've had education, government affairs, finance committee. Um, and now we have a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee that's gonna be coming to you with great events and great information. And so I do wanna recognize that that is a new committee. If you saw the star, you're like, what's the DEI committee? A great group of people who are really interested in moving the needle and really not only talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion, but really creating a space for that here at uh, here at the chamber. So you'll be hearing more from them. So thank you, Alon. Carrie Shaw, another one of our wonderful uh, board members, got an email from Renton um, Tech Foundation. Looks like they're going to be doing this great thing at the Hotel on the Water. It's right there in Renton. It'll come to me. But their um, staff, uh, the students are going to be cooking there. So it's a way to donate, but also get really good food. So you'll see that um, come out in a newsletter or an email to you real soon. So Renton Technical Foundation did a lot of great work with students uh, right when the pandemic hit. They were able to offer scholarships. They were offer, able to offer laptops. And so really, obviously, education is uh, what they do. But when COVID-19 hit, they really had to pivot and really put students first to see what they can do. So we appreciate Written Technical Foundation and all they do in the community. Derek Lockhart with Liberty Mutual Insurance. He can take care of all your insurance needs, I'm sure, but don't quote me on that. Get a quote from him. Uh, but you can reach out to Derek Lockhart with any information, Liberty Mutual Insurance. He is here local. I know that he works directly with some of our, our real estate agents as well and making sure that their clients have the services and, and goods that they need uh, when becoming a new homeowner. So if you have any questions, reach out to Derek Lockhart. Next, we have BECU. So we have Vignesh and Roland and Tatiana and Kara. Uh, Thanks, Novia. Um, so I'm Kara with BECU, and I am part of our market expansion team. So I help support Vig um, over at the Kent Station. Um, and by driving business and also with the community involvement. Um, so with BECU, we are just as our brand awareness and um, supporting the community. What we're trying to do as a not-for-profit credit union is help people that are struggling to find that right financial institution. Um, at BECU, we offer free financial health checks, uh, many educational tools, member discount programs. Uh, BECU is a full service financial institution and we're differentiated by our member focus mentality. Um, BECU has been recognized as a top credit union and we're one of the largest credit unions in the state. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions about BECU, our products, um, I also would love to share a $100 promo for new members, as well as highlight um, our HELOC campaign that's running through the end of March for our affinity um, partners. And so that's Alaska, Boeing, UW, Wazoo. I have a whole list. So if you think you might be an affinity partner, reach out. Um, and that's a $150 cash promo. 
All right, I'm not going to butcher his last name, but uh, VBSI has been a longstanding member of the chamber. Um, I do know that they have a program where you um, uh, to do a lot of hiring, a lot of training for new employees. Um, I believe that they work with uh, folks entering into the workforce who may have uh, visible and both invisible disabilities. So if you have any uh, questions, you can reach out to Frank. They also will be doing uh, one of our business essential workshops this month as well. So you can check that out on kentchamber.com. Um, hi, I'm Bill. Uh, I'm from the city of Kent. Uh, I'm the economic development officer. I work with Michelle uh, Wilmont. Um, Michelle spelled with two E's and uh, uh, we're, we're a liaison to the business community. If you have questions or concerns or thoughts, uh, please feel free to give me a call um, and uh, we'll try to help uh, resolve those issues with the city. And then uh, we're also a good conduit to uh, other companies, investors and uh, services in the technical business realm. So thank you for having us here. Yeah, if you could for me, uh, Bill, drop in the chat. Uh, so anyone looking for some uh, different commercial space, uh, there is a link right on uh, the Kent website where you can look at some of the available uh, commercial real estate there. So take a look there. Thank you. So John Scully is a new board member. He runs Scully uh, Agency there right on right um, downtown Kent, right on Central Avenue. Um, so he can take care of all your insurance uh, needs, home, business, auto, and life. So any information you want a local rep, go with John Scully. Hello, my name is Rosa Yaksam. I'm with Champion Arms Shooting Room. I'm the general manager here. We're kind of kitty corner to the Great Wall. Uh, we here are open to the public and we're here to promote safety through our education and our training. All right, so Sam is part of our government affairs committee and really keeps his ear to the ground uh, uh, as it relates to what's going on with government affairs. He's a really great advocate for the chamber. He's a wonderful advocate for the business community. And then also he represents Seattle King County Realtors um, Association. So we appreciate him and all of the work that he does. They have actually been a member since 1996. So they believe in the power of the chamber and that coalition that we provide with all of the different uh, chambers, Renton, uh, Seattle, Southside, Chamber, Milton Fife Chamber. So we appreciate you there. Sarah, oh, woo, dancing screen. Are we Don and Suzanne with Around the Clock? Hi, I'm Suzanne Cameron and uh, I'm with Around the Clock Inc. in downtown Kent. We've been servicing uh, South King County and North Pierce County for over 30 years now. Not only do we list and sell real estate, but we also specialize in residential management. So we can lease and uh, manage your rental property and we can manage your community association. If you have any questions or need anything, just give me a call or send me an email. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. I just wanna point out that Suzanne is a, a board member with the Kent Chamber, but really an advocate for business and a community partner. She is also uh, a member of KDP as well. So thank you so much for that. Don, we just let you in. So if you have anything to say, let us know, go off mute. Um, and Michelle Wilmot, Michelle with an E, thank you for dropping that link down uh, about the $240 million in grants for businesses in need. Uh, looks like that's going to be open soon, uh, late March, which will come sooner than we know. Uh, so that is there. So keep in mind, you don't have to write any of this down when you, um, when this meeting is over, we will send the chat with all of this great information as well. So Sarah Dorsch, I believe, with Odyssey International Services. And uh, they, if you wanna ship something globally, that is the place to be. They're located here in Kent. All information for Odyssey can also be found on our kentchamber.com website. Mayor Ralph, we need you to speak every month. We have all the board members here today. I'm so excited. Awesome. So Cindy Cameron with Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation. Uh, been a member of the chamber since 2014. She's also a board member, um, but honestly, Fairway uh, Independent Mortgage, really get, great mortgage company to go with. They have fabulous rates. They have great customer service. If you want to learn more, you can uh, look at their website as well and look at some of the really great reviews that specifically Cindy, Cindy Cameron gets uh, really personable uh, agents. So we appreciate you, Cindy. Next, Dave. Hi, Zenovia. Good to see everyone. My name is Dave Up the Grove. I am uh, your elected member of the King County Council. And after serving in the state house and now the county council, I think I'm best known for one thing. I am the only elected official in the state of Washington with a prepositional phrase for a last name, if you remember your English classes. Um, 
uh, county government uh, is the local government in areas where there are no cities. And we provide regional services, things like wastewater treatment, solid waste disposal, public health, transit, uh, criminal justice and human services. So not all that is sexy, but it's important work providing infrastructure to help businesses succeed. One of my proudest moments was a few years back earning the public official of the year award from the Kent Chamber. And I do my best, even if whether you agree or disagree with every decision, I tried to be authentic and accessible and, and thoughtful and will put my um, contact information, including my personal cell in the chat. If you ever have questions about government at any levels and not sure where to turn, don't hesitate to give me a buzz and I can get you plugged in with the, the right processes. Thank you, Dave. We appreciate your, your partnership with the chamber. SCAC Industries and Employment Service um, is a really great organization. We've used them here at the chamber. So they are in the business of training folks with uh, both vis visible and indivisible disabilities. Um, and so if you want to be a partner of theirs, what that would look like is you allowing someone to come in and be trained at your location at no cost to you, but definitely a benefit to that student or that client that is um, trying to break into the workforce. So we appreciate our partnership with SCAC. Well, we all know what Kent Station is. Uh, Kent Station is doing some really great work. They have great restaurants and shopping. So if you wanna shop local, start at Kent Station and make your way out. Um, I know that they have a few events coming up as well. Uh, a lot of their restaurants still have their tents uh, up. Hi, sorry guys. I don't know why that button didn't work. That's weird. Anyway, this is Cynthia, the um, marketing manager at Kent Station. Hello everybody. Uh, real quick, we've got blood drives going on right now here at Kent Station, so please sign up to donate blood if you can. Uh, we're also gearing up for our Easter egg hunts and um, Easter bunny photos. You can get information about that on our website. And then we're also super excited that AMC is open and um, you can do private theater rentals there. So we encourage you to go to kentstation.com for all the information. Have a good day. Thanks, Cynthia. All right, Allison out-of-the-box manufacturing. Hey, everybody. Um, thanks for the chance to uh, say hello. Out-of-the-box manufacturing is a contract manufacturer of circle board assemblies. Uh, we're actually on the Renton side of 180th, but uh, love to uh, support our customers and industry in the city of Kent. Thanks for allowing me to have a minute today, Zenobia. You're welcome. Good to see you, Allison. All right, Carrie. Hello everyone, my name is Carrie Mariyama. I am the Development Officer at Valley Medical Center and this is a big week for us as we are commemorating the one year anniversary of our fight against COVID-19. Um, and we've also recently launched a Think a Caregiver program as really a lasting tribute um, to our healthcare heroes and just all that they've given to our community. Um, so I will add that link to chat if you'd like to learn more. Thank you. Thank you so much. They have a great message for us to send out. That'll be going out here pretty soon. I did get that message. So Roger um, with Ajax, so Ajax is part of our diversity, equity, and inclusion. Their CEO, Lynn, is part of, or their executive director, Lynn, is part of our uh, DEI committee, really um, committed to that mission. Uh, but Ajax Apprentice, it really is just that. They do apprenticeship in aerospace, and they do a lot of training here in the community. I know that we'll hear a lot more about them, probably from the mayor and her state of the city as well, and some of the work and the partnership that they have. So we appreciate uh, the support of Ajax. Ajax. Thank you for the good shout out. We appreciate it. Oh yeah, I didn't know you're here. Do your own. <laughs> no, no, that's good. You were perfect. I just yeah. I couldn't get I couldn't get my my button to pop up so I could unmute. But all uh, right. we're all good. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Drop any link that you need to um in the chat. Thank you, Junia. Uh, hello, hello everybody. Um, I am majoring in accounting in Central Washington University, but I'm currently working as an intern at Taxi Sign in Kent. Uh, we are a virtual tax firm serving individual and small business clients across the United States. We provide dedicated professional tax assistance anywhere and anytime. So our company also provides bookkeeping services as well. So it's great to meet so many people through this great opportunity. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And then Joy with Eagle's Nest. Hi, everyone. My name is Joy Promise. I'm with Eagle's Nest Community Kitchen. We focus on 
um, bringing awareness to food insecurity in urban and rural areas. We have a mobile food pantry, thanks to our Mayor Dana, who gave me the information to connect with other community partners. We're also working on a community kitchen that will teach people who are coming out of incarceration, domestic violence, and children coming out of juvenile to give them uh, jobs, to teach them hospitality and also culinary awesome. arts at a basic level. So I wanna thank everyone for uh, allowing me, inviting me here. And I just look forward to doing, uh, working with more community partners to strengthen our community. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joy. We've got a few more here um, that we're just going to get through and then we will be on to our presentation with the mayor. So don't wanna cut you short, but uh, make it short and sweet. Carmen and Janet with Legal Shield, ID Shield. Alrighty, all information on ID Shield slash Legal Shield Financial Coaching can be found on our Kent Chamber uh, website. And we just from the chamber want to thank uh, Carmen Meeks, who is a uh, she's in our incubator space. And so we appreciate that partnership with her. Again, all information on KentChamber.com. Danielle with Marriott. Hello, my name is Danielle Pineda. I'm the director of sales for the residents in Seattle. Uh, SeaTac Airport. So even though we're in SeaTac, we actually have quite a number of clients in Kent. And right before the pandemic, we had every every foresight to join the chamber, but unfortunately that didn't happen. So we're looking forward to be joining part of it in 2021. Um, so I want to introduce myself and just thank the chamber for everything that you are doing. The, the just the the growth and development is uh, at least for my particular property, and I think for also assisting SeaTac, it's been um, very very uh, very positive uh, news and even networking and I'm um, getting to know some of the folks. Um, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Tina Arwa is your 33rd district representative. Uh, she's been a member of the chamber just last year, has been serving the 33rd district uh, for a few terms now. I know that she has some great bills out, uh, a real advocate for education and advocate for uh, diversity or equity in technology. And so if you want to look up some information from her, you can go uh, to her website. Dave, David. Hi, everyone. I'm Dave Skipton with Successful Business Dynamics. I'm a business coach who loves working with small business. So if you have issues or if you'd like to just be able to get on top of your business and run it rather than having it run you, um, reach out to me. I'll put my contact information in the chat. The other thing I wanted to say real quickly is I'm part of the Kent International Festival Executive Board. And we are in the process of putting together a Kent International Festival for this year. Likely it will be virtual. I'll put more information out. Definitely go on the Kent International Festival um, website because we're excited about bringing it back to Kent. Wonderful. Thank you, Tyann and Kevin. Hi. So Green River College is, uh, has got all sorts of great resources for small businesses from credit classes to uh, bachelor programs to the Small Business Center, who I work with out of Kent Station, the, the Kent campus. And so if you have small businesses that have any needs or generalists, we can help you with SBA financing or applying for PPP or EIDLs or the state grants. Um, and uh, I've been pleased to have great support from the city of Kent over the years. Um, they make it possible for us to be able to provide our services to small businesses at no cost to the businesses. So I'll put my contact info in the chat. Awesome, thank you, Kevin. And then I did skip one, someone who's new to the chamber and wanted to definitely allow him to um, introduce himself, Darius. Hey, uh, my name is Darius Williams. I am new to the chambers. I'm new to the NWIS. I've been with the company about three months. Um, I recently joined the ambassador committee, so I'm also new to the Kent Chambers as well. Um, I'm looking forward to getting acclimated to the city of Kent. And I do recruitment for NWIS. Um, you guys got our information. D'Angelo told you what we do. Uh, we also, I'll add that we also uh, have office jobs. We have admin positions, uh, light payroll, light HR. Um, so if you have any, you know, any, like uh, I was looking at Kevin Grossman, if, uh, if you have anyone that wants to know any job seekers or anything like that, just reach out to us. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Darius. Welcome to the community. And so now, um, Araya, was that it? We can go to the next slide. Awesome. It is with my pleasure. We can get going with our um, event today. And I just appreciate everybody and appreciate those introductions. I hope that you found someone that potentially you can partner with. So now I want to introduce our 2021 president, Julia Atwood with Shannon and Associates to introduce our speaker for the day. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending today. We have um, just great participation for this. So um, thanks for joining us. It's uh, my great pleasure to introduce our speaker, uh, Mayor Dana Ralph. Dana graduated from Kent Meridian High School where she met and uh, later married her high school sweetheart, Sean. Uh, together, they raised two boys who graduated from Kent Ridge High School and are both in college. More than 20 years ago, <clears throat> excuse me, Dana started a small business in Kent, which she still owns. Um, she first entered local government about 15 years ago when she volunteered to serve on the Land Use and Planning Board as, and the Kent Arts Commission, combining her passion for smart growth and cultural arts. As she learned more about the inner workings of city government, she wanted to be more involved and help shape the city's future. Dana was elected to the city council and served from 2012 to 2017, including two years as the council president. Please help me welcome Mayor Ralph. Thank you, Julia, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us today. We were, we were talking before the meeting and it's been almost exactly a year since I presented at the chamber um, for the state of the state of the business community at Green River College. And I don't think at that point, any of us realized that it would probably be well over a year before we were in person again. So at that time, we were really focused on um, all the new projects that we were gonna be bringing to the community and our businesses in, in 2020. And um, then this thing called COVID happened and we really had to pivot the way we were doing things, just like all of you did, right? That, that day when you woke up and thought, you know, my employees can't come to work, we're gonna have to work from home, my businesses have to close, we have to lock our doors. Uh, very scary times for business. And um, I am so proud of the way that our Kent business community has, has weathered that. So at the city, we've spent this year really trying to find ways to support our businesses through information, um, advocacy and direct support. We, like I said, we had to pivot very quickly and find creative ways to do this work because there was nothing normal about what happened last year. Um, the rules changed, your business has changed, and we had to do everything we could to help support that. So we partnered with the chamber, um, partnered with KDP, partnered with our local businesses to make sure that you all were getting not only the information you needed, but um, had direct ways to connect with opportunities that were available during, um, during these really unprecedented and scary times. So today I'm gonna try and walk through for you some of the things um, that we were able to accomplish or programs that we um, worked through in 2020. More um, generally, we try and focus these conversations on like, this is what's ahead of us. And, and I'm gonna tell you right now, we don't actually know what's ahead of us. So we're gonna keep making sure that we're supporting and um, creating opportunities for businesses to sustain and thrive through the next year. But um, we were able to do a lot of really great things in 2020, um, even in the environment that we were that we're still in. Um, definitely light at the end of the tunnel, but want to just sort of go through some of the highlights of 2020. Um, it's easy to focus on all of the, the bad things that happened, but there were some, some really good things that came out of 2020 as well. So I want to start with... Um, talking a little bit about our small business grant program. We were so excited as a city to be able to offer several million dollars to our local small businesses. Um, we, had, we had received some funding, funding through the federal government and were able to pass that through to small business in Kent. And we set up a program to do direct grant funding. Uh, we heard feedback from our business community and we were able to, to change up a little bit, um, loosen the restrictions on that, make more businesses eligible, and ultimately um, push out over $2 million directly to our businesses to make sure that you all could keep your employees paid um, and employed and your doors open and your lights on. So um, really proud of the work that was done. We also made sure that we were focused on equity in that grant making process. So we, we uh, recruited and hired 
um, translation services worked with uh, local nonprofits to make sure that these grants were accessible to all of our businesses um, and especially our small um, immigrant owned businesses so that there was not a language barrier in making sure that we were helping them get access to that money. So like I said, really proud of that work. Um, we also heard from our restaurants and in a time when their doors were closed and they needed a way to make sure that they could continue to serve their customers. We were um, one of the first cities that issued a cap on the, the delivery services so that Uber, um, DoorDash, what we heard from our restaurants is that the, the service charge to them was so expensive that they were not able to, to remain competitive. And for many of them, their delivery was the only thing that was allowing them to keep their doors open. So um, I proposed to the city council and they passed an ordinance that put a cap on those services. And not too long after that, um, the state of Washington actually followed and, and put that same cap in place to make sure that we weren't seeing that, um, that opportunistic or price gouging concept there with our businesses or, or our residents who were using those services. Um, also to help our restaurants during this time, if you've been down on First Avenue, you'll see the little parklets that we were able to install. So we used some, some of that federal funding again and built um, platforms that are out in front of our First Avenue restaurants um, that they were able to put tents on and create an enclosed an open enclosed space. So when the governor opened up dining to the outside, there was an opportunity for folks to come and patronize those restaurants. Um, also worked with a lot of our businesses at Kent Station to provide tents. So um, if you think back to when the restaurants couldn't have people inside, but they could do outdoor dining, the weather was changing. It was getting a little dicey out there, but we were able to work with a local Kent business and the, and the Kent Downtown Partnership to make sure that those tent options were available. And uh, I've heard from a lot of our restaurant owners that that is another thing that just helped them survive through this. And I'm kind of hoping that it doesn't go away completely. I really like that outdoor dining with a little bit of shelter, right? Just in case the rain comes. And um, I'm, I'm hoping that that sticks around and that we've sort of changed the way that we dine here in the Northwest. Um, I, in 2020, I was the president of the Sound Cities Association. So that's a group of the 38 cities outside of Seattle and King County that come together to work on all things that are related to cities. And with, through that group, I was able to um, advocate with the governor's office early in the pandemic. If you think about that long list of things that were shut down, businesses like construction and landscaping were shut and it didn't make a lot of sense. They were outside, they were able to provide protections to their employees. And so we worked um, via Sound Cities Association to advocate with the governor's office to open up some of those restrictions and get people back to work faster. It was really important to find ways to keep our economy moving and construction is one of those ways. And if you think about like our landscapers there, outside working generally one or two, and it just didn't make sense for them to not be able to perform um, those functions during that time. Let's see, um, part of our COVID-19 response also included a $300,000 investment to manufacturing employment retention program, which is a collaboration between multiple partners to support Kent manufacturers that were impacted by closures and business, in, uh, business interruptions. Again, we wanted to try and find creative ways to help make sure that our businesses were able to make it through this time and really proud of that investment. So that program offered incentives to hire retrain and rehire furloughed employees. Um, we heard from both AJAC and Green River earlier in the introduction period. And so we worked with, with both AJAC and Green River to create online safety trainings for employees that needed to work in close quarters. So um, what, what kind of safety precautions could be put in place to, to make sure that people are were able to work? A lot of those manufacturing businesses are essential employers, so they were able to stay open, but they needed to meet that ever-changing mandate of safety um, precautions. You think about the evolution through the pandemic where we started out with just check your temperature, wash your hands. Those were the two big things we talked about that over and over again. And then it was, yeah, maybe you should wear a mask. What do you think? And then it turned into you have to wear a mask and what kind and all of that. So we really worked closely with our businesses um, to make sure that we were staying up with those precautions and that people were up to date on those safety requirements. We also invested $85,000 in the Highline 
and Green River College Small Business Development Center. So you heard from Kevin earlier um, about the work that they do to provide free technical assistance to our local businesses. Um, I am extremely proud to say that this was the largest amount given by a city to the Small Business Development Center system. We understand that providing our entrepreneurs with guidance in um, not only starting their businesses, but maintaining them is an extremely important part of our economy. Small business is the foundation of what we do, and we need to make sure that folks are set up for success. And um, during the pandemic, that didn't change. If you, I have heard about a lot of folks that were that were forced to stay at home, working at home, but also that helped them sort of come up with those ideas for new businesses and and find new paths. And and the investment that the city of Kent made in Green River and Highline. Um, small business development centers um, was really helpful to a lot of those folks. We are also in the process of designing um, increased investments in technical assistance based on all of the lessons learned. So um, we're including an expansion of the commercial affordability pilot that Zenovia Harris, um, our chamber CEO, participated in last year for outreach, really looking at the critical ways that we can provide assistance to businesses to help them be successful. We also talked, um, we did a lot of work in our permit center, as I said, construction is an important way to keep our economy moving. And so um, some of the things that we did here is um, we switched to a more virtual environment um, necessitated by COVID, but it allowed our, our um, developers to do more online permitting and um, make those kinds of things successful. We, we expanded the time frames on how long permits were valid and things were vested so that we gave folks a chance to just breathe and figure out how they could move those projects forward um, because we really know, again, construction is a great way to keep our economy going. Um, it was mentioned in my introduction that I am also a small business owner. So Chase, aside from my role here as mayor, um, faced all those same challenges. How do I keep people employed? How do we keep our businesses going? Um, I'm the medical billing service and early on doctors couldn't work. Or if you think back to the, the day when everything but non-essential um, medical was cut off. So I understand what that takes. And, and, and so it's important to me that we as a city provide support to our entrepreneurs and small businesses and our micro enterprises so that they can continue to thrive and have the support that they need. We know that they're the backbone of our economy and at the center of everything we're doing. So we are committed here at City Hall to continue to help those small businesses in particular really make it through, um, make it through this pandemic and that they continue to thrive and that they've got the support and know that Kent is a city that is here to support that business community. We, we understand how important that is. Switching gears a little bit, um, some things, projects that are coming in the future. We are Naden property. It's something that I know that you all have heard about for a long time. We've got this property here um, just west of City Hall. And um, there was a, a hotel development on that we had slated for that, but unfortunately the pandemic, right? That seems to be the, the thing that's changing everything we're doing. Um, but the good piece that is coming out of that is we now have a, an MOU with a company called Avenue 55 to look at developing job training centers, um, creator space, manufacturing opportunities. We wanna inspire innovation. And we're really hoping that this space that will be um, created there does all of those things. And it'll be right here in the heart of downtown. So um, not only is it gonna provide opportunity for folks to, to build and create business, to receive that really important job training, but it's connected to everything that is the heart of downtown Kent. So it will also provide more people in downtown to support all of the great local businesses that we have here um, on that Meeker corridor in our historic downtown and, and all the way over to Kent Station. So more to come on that, but we're, we're excited about the opportunity that that is going to bring. We're also making, um, continue to make great progress on our Meet Me on Meeker project. If you haven't been out, um, west of, of downtown lately, um, head down to Meeker Street. It is a completely transformed area. So it's a, a planning project that the city, we envisioned um, quite a few years back and it's really been, been coming, coming to life. So between Ethos, the development that's across from the golf course and Midtown 64, they're in their final phases of development. Um, that is, it's, it's 
mid to high end residential, something that we don't have a lot of here, especially in the Valley. We're excited to welcome all those new neighbors and the business um, that and the support to the business community that they're bringing. But we're also doing um, great projects along Meeker that are expanding things like the sidewalks and play opportunities for folks to hang out. It's a very different feel and it's creating a really welcoming entrance into our downtown core. So like I said, if you haven't been down there, um, check out Meeker Street. It is a completely different place where we're also in the process of renovating the um, driving range and adding some additional stalls, updating all of that. So again, a recreation opportunity um, or an opportunity to take those, those business clients out that you, that you need to spend some time with outside of the boardroom or off of Zoom and um, help show them some of the things that are really special about, about downtown Kent for sure. Um, lastly, I want to talk a little bit about Sound Transit, another complete transformation for the city of Kent um, up on the West Hill. Uh, the new eight mile segment of the light rail is running directly um, along Pack Highway up there just west of I-5 and it's scheduled to open in 2024. We're really excited about the opportunities for redevelopment that are coming along that corridor. We know that there will be um, places for new business to locate. There'll be new housing opportunities up there and it will be a game changer for, for our West Hill for sure. We've seen that everywhere light rail has come in the, um, in the build out as Sound Transit has been doing that. So definitely if you're, if you're driving by, check that out. There's, um, it's, it's, it's becoming real. Uh, really excited about the opportunity that that's gonna be bringing. So I really just wanna say um, thank you so much to the chamber for all the work that you've done um, in, in supporting our businesses, in helping the city of Kent get the word out on the opportunities. I see, an oppor I see um, this partnership continuing to grow and together we can continue to support our business community. We know that we are coming to the end of the pandemic, but the reality is we don't know what we're gonna look like on the other side. So, um, Vaccines are happening. We heard this morning uh, they're they're vaccinating about 1,800 people a day just at Showware Center. So that means we are making real progress, um, and people will start to come back out. Businesses will start to be able to reopen, but um, you know it's going to look different. So I'm going to tell you, I I don't I'm not going to sugarcoat this. This last year has been probably the hardest year any of us have been through. Um, we're exhausted, all of us, overwhelmed and stressed. And we're really just still bracing for what's to come. But what I can tell you is that the state of our city, of our business community is strong. Our businesses are resilient and compassionate and thoughtful and caring and mostly optimistic, right? I think that that is such an important word that we know there's brighter days ahead. And we also know that together we're going to make sure that Kent not just survives, but thrives. We heard, we heard that um, said earlier from Vine Maple Place and it just really resonates, right? We, surviving is not good enough for Kent. We need to thrive and we need to take, each, take care of each other, support each other and make sure that this city um, is the best one in the region and that everybody else knows that. That's what's gonna help um, attract and retain the businesses that we need to support our residents and provide the jobs that they need. So again, a huge thank you to all of our businesses that are um, on the line today for what you have done to support our community this year. Um, it's been incredible to watch the generosity and the compassion and the spirit of our business community coming out every time we have said, hey, we need donations for, for blankets or for food or volunteers to do that work. Our business community has stepped up in a way that um, I can comfortably say I have not seen in any other city. And that makes me so very, very proud to be the mayor of Kent and be able to represent the heart and the spirit of this community. So um, that's a lot. It's all of the great things we've done in the last year. And I don't know what our time looks like, but I'd be happy to take questions, Zenovia, if we've got time for that. Yeah, thank you. We we are good. Uh, we are good on time for a couple of questions, but uh, I did just want to say that what we're the the quote we're kind of dancing around is a quote that I live by, and you're right. It is what the business community really stood for. It's a Maya Angelou quote, and it's uh, my mission in life is not merely to survive, 
but to thrive and to do so with some passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style. And so that is essentially what Kent and the business Kent business community has been doing. And so I think we, we've said it, but we, we just got to call that out. That is a Maya Angelou quote all day long. And it is, it is, that is what we're doing as a community. So thank you. Um, I agreed a hundred percent. Yeah. Thank you for articulating that much better than I was able to and for giving credit where credit is due. It's all of those things that I do. I really feel like on all those levels, our, our community, our business community, our residents have just stepped up and, and, and we have, we have rocked this year, even though it has been probably will be the hardest year any of us ever go through. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. So we do have some questions in the chat. So for folks that are on the line, if you have questions, drop them in the chat. We're running this on Facebook. So I'll just kind of go over these questions as they come in. Um, and then of course, Amir is always available. Her team is always available to answer uh, some of the questions. Um, and again, we've got folks from economic development on the line too. So uh, feel, feel the need to chime in if you need to. Um, so the first question here is related to COVID-19. Um, why do you think COVID infection rate is higher in South King County? Um, that's a great question. So I will tell you, I 100% um, believe two different things. South King County has more essential workers than any other area in our county, um, possibly in our state, right? We've got service employees. We have folks that are, we talked about our manufacturing industry. All of those kinds of jobs have required people to get get out of their houses and go to work every single day, right? These are not people that have the, the luxury of sitting at home and sort of being on a screen all day. And that plays into exposure and, and infection rates. Um, we also have a significant number of multi-generational households um, because we've got a large immigrant community and we just have people, housing prices, all of those things play into it, right? So there's there's grandma and grandpa, mom and dad, kids all living in the same house. And a lot of the younger generation being the essential workers are coming out, they're going to work and then having that opportunity to be exposed to COVID coming back and bringing it into the household. So we're, um, if you look at our traffic patterns during COVID, um, I don't know how many of you were paying attention to the like the traffic maps, especially early on, you could see that it was green everywhere, but 167, it was still yellow and red almost every single day. And that's because people were leaving their homes and going to work to make sure that all of us had all of those basic services that we need. So I think that that's really what plays into that. Yeah. Um, thank you. So another, just a kind of follow-up question on that. So with the um, we talked a little bit about affordable housing and the project, the housing projects on Meeker. Um, the project that is going to be going up in West Hill, is that going to be more affordable housing? Uh, some of the business community is concerned that their employees are going to get kind of boxed out um, and being able to work and live in the same community. Um, and so, yes, we are appreciative of Sound Transit coming in and doing that work. But is there any thought process behind, is that going to be affordable housing for these essential workers who us, you know, are, are going outside of their community to work. Definitely. So Sound Transit in the area around um, the stations that they, it's called Transit Oriented Development. And the goal is absolutely that, that work for, uh, workforce housing, affordable housing. So we'll see mixed level incomes going in there um, and making sure that, that we're preserving that. So just wanna um, make a couple of points about, especially the, the newer housing that's going in down there in Meeker. Kent is, um, we're really strong when you compare us to our neighbors sort of in that middle income housing. What we don't have is the high, the high end, which um, some of those projects are fulfilling and the really low end. So we're really focused on how do we make sure that it's balanced because we wanna make sure there's housing available for all ranges of income in the city of Kent. But yeah, definite opportunities for um, affordable housing around that station. Awesome, thank you. And I'll just ask the question. Uh, are you satisfied with the infection rate in Kent? It's uh, 6,200 per 100,000 residents. Satisfied, I, yeah, no. I mean, I don't want any of our residents to have to deal with COVID. I just think that that's um, the goal. All of our goals should be to get, to get rid of this infection. So that's part of why though, we early on partnered with King County and said, look, you need to bring vaccinations here 
because it's important that our residents, because of those higher infection rates, have direct access. And so um, I saw a graph yesterday and Kent and Auburn are now, we're starting to rise to the top in the number of residents in the, the categories that the governor has laid out that have been vaccinated. So we're seeing numbers well above 50% of our population that is eligible being vaccinated. And that's because we've got those, um, those mass vaccination sites here in Kent. It's also why we worked with them on testing and all those kind of things. So um, I'm definitely not satisfied. It won't be until everybody is, the, everybody that wants to be is vaccinated and people are safe to come back out into the community. Yeah, thank you. Um, and so do you have any tips for residents, <clears throat> excuse me, residents still um, trying to get vaccinated? There's a lot of folks that live in the community that aren't getting vaccinated in this community at the Shower Center. So is there uh, any tics, trips, tricks or tips uh, for those folks trying to get vaccinated in their city? Yeah, so if they are in the eligible brackets and that sort of is a moving target, right? So first, um, the state opened up for 65 and older. The county narrowed it down to 75 and older initially. Now back open to 65 and older if you live in a multi-generational household. Um, there are continuing to be appointments available at Shower Center. So two choices, you can log in and do it via computer, or there's also a phone number that is listed in, in our advertising as well as the counties that you can call to get those appointments. But um, like I said, they're, they're ramping up. We, are, we started out at about 500 a day, six days a week, and now we're, we're, we're closing in on that 2000 mark. That's great. So, all right. Any other questions? Let's see. So this is more statewide, but I'll ask uh, it anyway. It says, when is Washington going to be fully open or even go into a respectable phase since Texas, Florida, and Mississippi are fully open? That is a really good question. Um, so, We are, we are continuing to advocate for what new phases look like. It's a question that I know um, most of the mayors in the cities in Washington have been asking the governor on a regular basis. What does phase three look like? When is it gonna happen? Um, I, I will tell you, I believe that our business and residents are behaving in, in safe ways and we've demonstrated that. So we are also anxiously awaiting the the next phase of reopening. Um, whether I would say, well, I know I wouldn't say, hey, just run out, throw your mask away, everything's fine. I don't think we should be there. I do think we need to start figuring out how to reopen things because um, we're we're seeing the rates dropping, we're seeing the, the vaccination numbers go up and we need to be thoughtful, but we need to be moving forward for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we uh, had a meeting, we as in the chamber, I had a meeting with some of our chamber partners and folks from the governor's office yesterday, and we did talk about exactly what Mayor Ralph said, the number of folks that are being vaccinated or are vaccinated, at least one shot in the arm here in the city of Kent is a lot higher than around the state. And so that's a great thing. Um, and they are, you know, their, their message really is that they are building the road as they drive. And I think we've seen that. Um, and, and that was their message to us that they don't actually Actually know what the next step is. And so we as the chamber community appreciated them coming to us and asking us what we think um, and what our business thinks. And essentially, you know, our message was they want to get open. Businesses are responsible. Business are resilient. Um, you can give someone money all day long, but if you give them a plan as a business person, you can do a lot more with a plan than you can do with a few dollars. And so um, I think it's really important that if you, um, as a business, you are communicative to your city, to your chamber, to your legislators on what it is that you want and need and want to see, you have the opportunity. Um, at Mayor Ralph, you said it before, there's some good things that have come out of COVID-19. And one of those is access to your legislators and access to um, understanding the different bills that are going on and, um, you know, being able, you don't have to go to Olympia to testify now. You can log on to a Zoom and you can do that, or you can see what bills are being passed. And so um, there's opportunities out there. So just make sure as a business community that you're, you know, you're um, in check with that and in, in, in pulse with that. So I appreciate that, um, that, that conversation with, um, with the state yesterday about what they think the business community needs. And, you know, yeah. Yeah, we are, we're definitely hearing the same things, Zenobia, um, that 
that the plan hasn't been developed yet. And I think that that's also a, a place of frustration, right? We we all do better when we know what we're working towards. So we, um, again, through Sound Cities Association, continue to advocate for the governor to help us understand what the basics are of whatever that plan is gonna be. Um, because we don't wanna be in a place where we say, hey, you can reopen tomorrow, but there's these 15 things that need to be done. I, I wanna be able to have our businesses ready and be able to activate as soon as they can. So we'll continue to um, to advocate with the governor's office on getting that plan out. Awesome. Okay, we have one final question. Do we have anyone on the line? You can uh, raise your hand. I can flip through and make sure if you wanna come off mute, if you can't articulate in the chat. Awesome, I don't see any hands raised, I don't see. So I have one final question for you, Mayor, and I'm sure you knew this question was coming today. And that question is, I'm gonna read it as if I didn't see it already. Are you running for re-election this year? So yes, I am running for re-election. Um, stay tuned, there will be an announcement um, about the campaign coming in the, in in just a very short amount of time. So I love getting to represent this city. It is, um, it's so important to me to take care of the place that has taken care of me my whole life. And, and even though this last year, I did, I tell you, we did not sign up to, to, to lead a city in the middle of a pandemic. I could not be prouder of the community that we have and um, definitely want to continue to represent it. So. Awesome. There you have it. Thank you. Thank you. You heard it here at the you Chamber heard it here. You, you heard, heard it here. here. No, <laughs> awesome. Before, well, be before I let you wrap up, I would be remiss in not saying a huge thank you to our community and, econo community and economic development department. Um, they have done, Bill and Michelle are on this call, but they have been working nonstop to make sure that we provide as much support as we can um, to our businesses and have done a spectacular job. They are always available to support our business community and um, find ways to help you all through what's going on. So just want to say a big thank you to them. Yes, I echo that. They answer the phone. Bill answers the phone even on his day off. So I appreciate him. I'm just calling like, oh, you're off today. No problem. Uh, and he still finds a way to help me out. So I appreciate that. I'm definitely an advocate for commercial affordability and an advocate for the business community um, and making sure that we get through this pandemic. So, uh, Mayor, I appreciate you today. Um, you. I appreciate your time, your energy, and what you're doing for the community. And we, as the chamber and the business community, are really looking forward to a stronger, deeper, longer lasting relationship um, with the city to ensure that this is a place where businesses want to come and start. I know we have some uh, interest in coming over to the city. So, I welcome all businesses to come. This is a great city to grow your business, to build your business, um, and be with like-minded uh, and a verse, very diverse community. So uh, we appreciate you and good luck with your uh, re-election, Mayor Ralph. And uh, with that being said, um, I'm going to pass it back to our president, I think, <laughs> just to kind of wrap up and give her thoughts for today, for sure. Thank you so much, Mayor Ralph, and I echo Zenobia's um, congratulations and, and best wishes for your re-election campaign. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for attending today. Again, this was live streamed um, via South King Media. I love Kent and can be found on our YouTube channel um, to view at a later time. Um, at this time, I'd like to acknowledge our 2021 luncheon sponsor. Thank you so much. I'm going to try to pronounce this right. Abyssinia Hair and Beauty Clinic. We really appreciate your uh, support and investment in the chamber. Um, I'd also like to thank again our gold, silver, bronze, and copper sponsors. Of course, we, we um, couldn't have these events without your sponsorship and support. So thank you so much. Um, a couple of things I'd like to tell you about for upcoming events. Um, your Chamber, Your Vision is the last Friday of each month, and it's really Chamber members' opportunity to provide us feedback um, on how we can improve what, what we are doing um, right, what we should do more of, and what you need from us as a Chamber. So I um, encourage you to attend that. It's um, hosted 
uh, by various chamber members, um, but really in op open format. Um, please also check out our website for upcoming workshops. There's um, so many coming up, but there's a talent acquisition and onboarding workshop. There's uh, 10 steps to great CEO, um, the Women's History Month virtual celebration, um, and uh, next month's luncheon will be sound, a sound transit update. Um, and we're going to again offer uh, the option to order a lunch for pickup at the Kent Chamber. And that's again, a great way to support our local um, restaurants. Um, remember the Chamber's here to serve you. So if you need anything, please reach out. Um, my contact information is on the Chamber website um, and um, as is all of this information. So um, immediately following this event, you'll receive just a quick two question survey. Um, I encourage you to take a moment to fill it out. It really provides us with, with great feedback. Um, and I have one more, one more plug. I'm gonna go off script, but the Kent Chamber is hiring. We are looking for a um, part-time, I think 20 hours a week person. And I believe the job is posted on our website, but um, uh, office um, coordinator and um, little accounting and um, some other things. So the details of that are on our website. So we'd love to fill that position soon. Um, thank you to Zenobia and Araya for, for all of all you do and um, in getting this luncheon specifically all set up for us. Um, we look forward to serving you and have a wonderful day. Yeah. Thank you so much, Julia. I, I just want to go back, Araya, to that to that women's conference. I think it's really important to, so we will be having a proclamation from the mayor um, for Women's History Month. This is the first uh, women's history luncheon that this chamber has done. I really encourage you, both our male allies and our women in the workforce, to please uh, register for this event. It is going to be dynamic. We have some great speakers. Uh, we were just able to, it, she's not on here, but I did want to recognize uh, Tyann uh, with Green River is going to be doing like a quick motivational and her non-traditional route to leading in the educational field. I think um, uh, it would be, a, it's going to be a great addition to this uh, particular event. The tickets are only $18.48 to symbolize the uh, first women's rights conference, right? And so it's really just an opportunity for us to celebrate, but we really want Want to have our allies and advocates there as well too. So uh, we appreciate you and Abyssinia uh, is also the presenting sponsor. Uh, we have Northwest Industrial Staffing who is led by a black woman as well here in the city of Kent. She is a sponsor. And then we have Aegis Living, another woman uh, who is just joining that, that organization too. So we really have some powerful people. We've got Puget Sound Energy um, on the panel, Amazon, myself, we have a confidence coach coming in and talking about being your authentic self. I'm just, if you can't tell, I'm just so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. We were supposed to have this last year and because of COVID-19, we couldn't. Um, and so just please register for that. Um, I thank you guys for all of your all of your questions. Um, and again, the survey. And then of course, if you want to rewatch this or you have uh, more questions, you can send them over to us. So uh, it looks like we're going to get you out of here on time. That's amazing. We sure appreciate you uh, and have a great day.